Farrell is here with that. Hey, Ronan, good morning. Good to see you guys. I had separation anxiety from yesterday. We did you too. So let me give you guys a number on this subject. 1.7 billion. That's how many times every day Tinder says its users swipe on the app to find potential mates. One scientist has said that the rise of digital dating could be the biggest change to how we pair off since marriage emerged as a social contract. Is that a good thing? Well, the brains behind Tinder seem to think so. At first glance, it looks like any other tech startup. Code flickering across computer screens, the occasional Rubik's Cube, and plenty of late-night programmers view. But make no mistake, what's being built behind these walls, one scientist has called unprecedented from an evolutionary standpoint. We're changing the world in that we're bringing people closer together um, and enabling connections that would have never otherwise existed. He says 8 billion connections so far, and counting. These are the headquarters of Tinder, one of the most popular dating apps in the world, and the inventor of the iconic dating app Swipe. Let's swipe right. All right, it's a match. And it's a match. The premise is simple enough. Based on your location, Tinder gives you what looks like a deck of cards. If you're interested, swipe the card right. If not, discard it to the left. And if you both swiped right, you're a match and can start talking. There's not much information except photos. Many offer no bio at all. What made you confident that that would be enough? Well, I think you have less information to go by in the real world because, you know, a lot of times all I have is somebody's physical appearance. But on Tinder, you have a variety of photos that represent a story about the person. A lot of the science behind doing that sort of matching was developed in the e-commerce world for things like Amazon or eBay, where you're just trying to find the right product. Dan Gould programs the algorithm that determines who you see on Tinder. It's looking at who you swipe on. You never explicitly had to say, oh, I'm into skiing. Yet, if you swipe right on every person who is into skiing, it will eventually figure out, oh, well, you are interested in that. So the more you swipe, the more information we use uh, to make better recommendations the next time around. Such as? <laughs> <laughs> I can't go into too much detail, but let's say we pay attention to the details of what you're swiping on. Also paying attention? Critics who charge that Tinder isn't expanding relationships, it's making them disposable. An explosive article in the latest Vanity Fair describes Tinder's high-tech, low-commitment swiping culture as a dating apocalypse. How do you respond to all the press out there that basically describes Tinder as a hookup app? It's just more fun to focus on a very narrow part of what Tinder means to the world because it's more controversial. If you actually go talk to our users, not the probably one out of 100 people Vanity Fair found, I think you'll hear something very different than what the perception is or how the press wants to portray it. And we did talk to users. Tinder introduced us to three of its most right-swiped profiles in Los Angeles. All spoke to the idea that deep down, Tinder culture can be a little shallow. I mean, it's all based on attraction. You're like, oh man, she's hot. I'm gonna swipe right. Show me what you look like. Most of the time, I don't flip the card. Of course I felt a little creepy at first because you're swiping, you're saying yes or no to people's faces. But plenty felt the possibilities outweigh the perils. Tinder is eager to point to couples like Caitlin and Jason, who went from swiping right to getting engaged. I don't think we knew what we were getting into, but it worked for us. We always say that one day our kids will tell their friends our parents met the old-fashioned way on Tinder. For Sean Rad, it's just the beginning. We want every new relationship to start, start on Tinder. If we were solving that problem for single people, believe me, that is a, a, a lifetime of conquests. Just days after we visited Tinder, the company made headlines with what a lot of people called a Twitter meltdown, responding to that critical Vanity Fair article with a string of tweets slamming the magazine. Tinder's growing fast, but clearly it still has plenty of naysayers, and getting past them is now going to fall to Sean Rad, that Tinder co-founder you just heard from. Just days ago, he was reinstated as that company's CEO. Interesting. A lot of imitators out there as well. A lot of imitators. There's a whole new field, and we're looking at some different facets of that tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow in particular, we're drilling down on the gender war in this. A lot of companies wrestling with the fact that guys are not as selective on these platforms, and some trying to respond by getting women in the driver's seat. We're looking at one company, Bumble, that's trying to do just that. Interesting. <laughs> it's been an education, Ronan. Thank you. Yes.